My switch to being almost exclusively a PC gamer was a gradual one. In my teens and early 20s, I loved my Xboxes and my stations of play, but that began to change when I discovered they lacked something that PC gaming had. Super cheap game bundles. PC Master Race. It's hard for me to resist a good game bundle. I've procured many in my time, and I find there are generally three types of games in these bundles. There's the games that are the main reason for buying the bundle, there's the games you've heard of but aren't particularly interested in, and then there's the games that you have no clue what they are. This episode is dedicated to the latter. You see, when you purchase game bundles by the truckload, you obtain a lot of these types of games. The kind of games that inflate your Steam library but will likely never experience what it's like to be chosen to receive that coveted blue button press. So, to make up for my neglect of these games, I've chosen five to play, and let me just say, there's just, there's just a lot of good games out there, guys. Ellipsis is a self-proclaimed, action-packed avoid -em up by Sell Me Games. Okay, so real talk, this game has no right to be as fun as it is. I started playing this game at 11.30 at night and didn't stop until four hours later. My sleep schedule is still messed up. The objective is to progress through a series of levels by collecting enough orbs to open the exit. While you're doing this, you will have to avoid enemy ships, projectiles, bombs, and whatever else the game may decide to throw at you. The game does a great job of switching up the mechanics to keep the entire play experience fresh. For as short and simple as it is, the game manages to work in stealth sections, you move, they move mechanics, and even a Frogger-esque stage. The levels are short enough so that even the more frustrating ones are still really fun to play as you know that moment of accomplishment isn't going to be too far off. To add some extra challenge, as the game is fairly easy, you can play a time trial version of each level and try to gain that sweet 5 star rating. Which is something that I really don't have time to try to do, but will probably do anyway. All in all, I really enjoyed Ellipsis. It's not revolutionary, it's not going to blow your mind, but it's a really solid play experience. The only real gripe I have with this game is that I have to share it with my cat. When I first loaded up Copica, I expected to play as a bird collecting materials for my nest, as the Steam description had explained. Which is what I did, but I just so happened to be doing this in a totalitarian society on the brink of collapse due to shortages in food and medicine and the constant threat of an impending war. We have faced struggle and hunger. We have faced enemies and hardship. But we have faced them together as one, and we will continue to do so. We will restore freedom, and freedom is order. Order is strength, and strength leads to victory. Aww, cute. So here's the thing. Copica is a great concept and I give Inaccurate Interactive huge props for the idea. I really enjoyed learning the story of this city through random bits of dialogue as I explored for trinkets. However, the game definitely has its rough edges. I encountered a few bugs where the items I was supposed to be looking for did not provide a waypoint as they were supposed to. There was also several instances of extreme frame rate drops and the game decided to crash any time I tried to return to the menu. However, I seem to be one of the lucky ones as there are several reviews on Steam that mention the poor optimization and how people would get consistently bad frame rates even at the lowest settings or not be able to run the game at all. After looking at the specs though, I'm sure the developers were aware of the optimization issues as it recommends a Core i7 and GTX 970. I repeat, this game you're looking at right now recommends a Core i7 and GTX 970. Can you believe it? No, I really can't. Fidel Dungeon Rescue is a roguelike grid-based dungeon crawler with an emphasis on puzzle gameplay. In the game, you play as this cute little pupper and make your way through the various levels of the dungeon. In your wake, you leave a trail, which you cannot cross, causing you to have to pick your path carefully in order to not block yourself in. Additionally, the game implements a rewind mechanic allowing you to backtrack and change your route to progress. While the rewind mechanic seemed like it might be overpowered at first, the game is just mind-bendy enough to screw with you and cause you to make mistakes. Many, many mistakes. This game is certainly a slower paced roguelike since in most game modes nothing happens without you making it happen. 
or unhappen as the case may be. I certainly died my fair share of times, but the game feels set up in a way that if you're patient and observant, you should be able to beat most of the levels on your first try. Once you get through the first 15 levels, you unlock several other play modes, which include this weird centipede thing, puzzle stages, and speed stages. You can also unlock robot and zombie versions of your dog. Dog. There's additional dungeons, daily challenges, and I'm sure some other stuff I'm not even aware of yet. My one piece of advice is to remember that barking is good for more than just being cute and causing spiders to web themselves. <laughs> Serial Cleaner is a 2D action stealth game where you play as the cleaner, a man tasked with cleaning up the mess after a serial killer's multiple rampages. I enjoyed this game, and I'm usually the last person to pick up a stealth game. Now, the reason I like this game may cause stealth veterans to not like this game, because... This is a really easy stealth game. With the exception of a couple of the later levels, this game is just silly fun with a bit of a stealth element thrown in. I spent a fair bit of time purposefully getting spotted because I could often cheese the police pretty easily. However, I felt the lax stealth difficulty actually contributed to the overall flavor of this game because it's a silly game. You're running about with police everywhere while you're vacuuming up blood, hiding in boxes, and grooving to 70s tunes. There's a story which is serviceable at explaining why working for a serial killer may not be the best idea, but overall the story really doesn't have any weight to it. Where the game does shine is in its style. The vibe of this game is just so great. The art, the music, the fun details. It's funky and the developer, now known as Draw Distance, clearly had a vision when working on this game. Flat Heroes is one of those tough as nails precision platformers, or at least it becomes that way towards the end. The early game is fairly easy, and honestly, the difficulty curve overall is jagged at best. The game is broken up into 10 worlds, each containing 14 levels and a boss. The level design doesn't offer a huge variety, as a lot of the later obstacles just feel like slightly tweaked versions of the earlier ones. However, each of the bosses feel rather unique and offer a nice challenge. That is, until... <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I rage quit this game. As much as I hate to ruin my gamer cred in the second episode of this series, Flat Heroes just broke me. I'll admit I was enjoying it for a time, and I think there is some fun to be had with what Parallel Circles created here. There was a few small quibbles I had with this game. There's the randomized nature of some of the levels, making it at times feel more luck than skill-based. Some levels contain a crazy amount of trial and error, as there just isn't very much information given to the player. Plus, there's the wonky momentum of the player's hero, which is a huge detriment in the levels that require more precision. These were minor enough individually, but all of these came into play during the eighth boss. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I quit. I'm not saying I'm done with this game forever. There's a multiplayer component that I didn't play with at all, and there's definitely a part of me that still really wants to beat that eighth boss. And if you're one of those people that liked really frustrating, punishing games and the satisfaction of finally being a level that you've spent far too much time on, then you might enjoy this one. I, however, have never been that type of gamer. If I'm frustrated, I'll quit. It's not like I don't have anything else to play. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. You get a thousand awesome points, and a gold star, and a puppy. Huge thanks to everyone who subscribed and shared the first episode. The feedback I got from that video brought a huge smile to my face. I hope to get these videos out pretty regularly, but as it turns out, video editing is really hard, so I can't make any promises on a schedule. Just know that the backlog grind is real and I'll keep plugging away. I feel like I just find any reason at all to show this footage because it just it, it cracks me up. Anyway, thanks again for the support, and I'll have another one of these videos out as soon as possible. Peace!